Liz Crosby here with another yoga flow. Today I'll be discussing brow chakra, third eye, number six, the last of the physical body cerebral spinal centers. This one is located in the space between the eyebrows. Its color is indigo violet or purple and it is associated with the element of light. And up until now, we've had all elements that are a, a little bit tangible, somewhat, so to speak. So we're starting to move into some of the more esoteric philosophical concepts now that are a little bit harder to comprehend until you get deep into your practice. But essentially, all of the elements are varying densities of light. And so this is the major processing center wherein we're able to understand from an, a all-encompassing perspective of awareness how the stagnant energy has been causing unnecessary pain and suffering by creating this perceived illusion of separateness in our vortex. And when we can understand from all possible trajectories with multidimensional analysis, that is when the mind can really truly let go of the limiting thought form, right? Yoga is the slowing of the turnings of the mind, yoga sthita spritis nirodaha. So we're moving right up into the mind space, right up into the brain. The symbol is just two petals, just two petals on the lotus. And the two petals are symbolic for the sun and the moon or ha, tha, yin, yang, and ida, pingala, right? The masculine, the feminine aspects, if you wanna go scientific, electric, magnetic, so as we continue to cultivate strength and flexibility and we find a balance between both the masculine and the feminine aspects, then more energy is able to allocate into the central axis and streamline straight up through to brow chakra. So this one's a fun one. I absolutely love brow chakra and I like to joke, I would not have the six pack abs if it wasn't for the third eye activation. <laughs> What's so fun too is as third eye starts to activate, you really start to see how there is that direct proportion, that direct correlation between strength and flexibility in equal parts, streamlines more kundalini energy through the central axis, which gives you more vivid quality visions so that you can really, really tease out and understand how the stagnant energy that you're going about collecting throughout your practice really causes the energy to deviate. So really excited to get deep into this one and we'll dive a little bit deeper into the properties, characteristics of this chakra as we move through the flow. Beginning in the brow chakra pose, balasana, one of the few postures where we actually make our forehead a part of the foundation. So knees can come together or out wide, feet together, roll forward, spine extending long, Brow pressing into the mat. Close the eyes and begin to connect to the breath. Take a nice deep inhalation into the nose. And exhale to side up, mouth and go. <sighs> Fixing the gaze at the space between the eyebrows. Again, inhale deeply through the nose. Exhale, side up, mouth and go. <sighs> Again, fogging up a mirror. Once more, inhale deeply through the nose. And exhale, side up, mouth, let it go. <sighs> Sealing the lips, begin to breathe in and out through the nose. Constricting the back of the throat just slightly so you can hear and feel the breath activate your ujjayi, kind of conquerors breath. And you can engage what's called Jiva Bandha, pressing the tongue into the roof of the mouth to redirect the current of air up to third eye for witnessing processing. And then walking the hands over to the right, as far up to the right as you can, left hand can stack on top of the right and then breathe into your left side body. Back through the center, over to the left. Right hand can stack on top of the left hand. Breathe into the right side body. And 
and back to the center. Come forward into your tabletop pose. Ground down through your palms and your shins. Inhale as you melt the heart forward and up. Sit down through your chapeza. Exhale around the spine, gaze at navel. Inhale as you fill the chest forward up. And exhaling to round. Take it into your bear pose when you're ready. You have these hip circles, shoulder circles, circles right good in the spine. Puppy dog pose, Anahatasana, walk the knees back, hands forward, melt the heart towards mat, re extend the sit bones up towards the ceiling. Breathe into your thoracic spine. And here again, you can actually rest your brow on the mat. It's kind of a nice pressure point. You lift up slightly, slide the right arm underneath your left arm, and set the right shoulder down. A little shoulder stretch here. If you'd like, you can extend the left leg out wide. Right hand catches the outer edge of the left foot. Left arm can sweep up and twist. Left hand reaches back to the right thigh, half bind. And then gently release back through the center. Slide left leg back, right arm out from underneath back into your puppy dog. Lift up, slide left arm underneath right. Set the left shoulder down, breathe into the rhomboids, muscles that connect the scapula to the spine. Slide right leg out in line with your left knee. Left hand can catch the outer to the right foot. Begin to twist. Right arm extends up as you inhale. Exhale, reach back for the left thigh and gently twist deeper. Already the breath may be collecting bits of karmic debris. Again, give all of your undivided attention to this information as it comes in. Gently release, right hand back to mat, slide right knee back, left arm up from underneath, back into your puppy dog, then roll forward into your space. Forearms to mat, hips to mat, broaden across the collarbones, drop right ear towards right shoulder, let chin off your chest, lock your left shoulder, breathe into your cervical spine. Back through the center, send the arms forward, palms facing towards one another. Lift everything up and begin to swim. Here for five, four, three, two, one. Cactus the arms, press down through the fingertips, lift your chest up. Drop the right shoulder, gaze over your left. Inhale through center. Exhale, twist. Moving from side to side, pause where we feel the stretching sensation. Deep or dry breaths. Back through the center as you inhale. Exhale, slowly release the spine back down, one word at a time. Hands come behind the back, interlace your fingers, press palms together. Reach the hands back behind. Spiral the inner thighs up towards the ceiling. Tuck the chin and re extend out the crown. Chin almost feel like you're being pulled by a string. Out through the big toe mounds and out through crown. Keep the back of the core engaged. Release the interlace skin side underneath shoulders. Add the strength of the arms. Press up, lift up, cobra pose. Wrap elbows and your shoulders back. Puff chest and broaden across the collarbones. Exhaling child's pose. Hips to heels, roll the spine forward to your thighs. And rest brow on that once more. And then rolling the spine up through to seated. Tuck your toes and take a seat on top of your heels. You can manually tuck those pinky toes. Alright, we're going to do a little bit of third eye activation breath work. We're going to take it in small quantities though and just integrate it throughout the practice. Weave it in. So it sounds like this. And there is a motion with the head. So as you inhale, you lift the chin and gaze up through the crown chakra, through your third eye. Exhale, shin lock into your jaw and bandha. So again, like this. All through 
the nose. All while pressing the tongue into the roof of the mouth. And then Jiva Bandha. And then bring the hands into Yana Mudra on either thigh. Thumb and index finger touching. One more. Pause for a moment. Notice how it makes you feel. You might feel a little bit of congestion in and around the third eye, which is why we're going to take it in small doses and in small increments. And then we'll come back and do some more throughout the practice. But it's a really fun breathing technique for, to help to activate number six. Walk hands forward, untuck the toes, gentle drum roll, kick the feet up. Wrench away for the heels, fingertips point towards your knees and lean your weight back. Slowly peel the heels of the hands up off of the mat. Fingertips will lift very last. And walk the hands back, lift your knees up, stretching out the bridges of the feet. Maybe lift up on top of the toe knuckles. Optional, optional. And then slowly lower it back down again. Walk the hands forward back into your tabletop. Spread the fingers wide, so you're asked upon the sun hands. Press firmly through the index finger and thumb knuckles. Tuck your toes, press down to the base, mounts up the knees up just a couple inches. Alternating knee taps. Kind of tricking our stabilizing muscles into engaging here. And then rise the hips up and back, walk it up. Bending one knee, then the other, allow the hips to shift from side to side. Breathing into the calves, the hamstrings, and the lower back. Making your way back into stillness. Right leg extends up and back. Open it out, bend the knee, and take some hip circles, ankle circles. Keep squaring off the traps. We extend the right leg up and back as we inhale. Exhaling, knee to third eye. Come forward to your plank pose. Inhale, to extend. Exhale, knee to third eye. Inhale to extend. Once more, exhale, knee to nose. Third eye, if you'd like, and then gently step the right foot between the palms. Left knee lowers, untuck toes. Inhale, rise up, left arm sweep up, low crescent pose. Expand across the heart center. Exhaling the hands back down to the mat. Strengthen your right leg, half splits. Reach the toes back towards your face. Inhale as you find length. Exhale, forward fold. You can tilt the foot from side to side if you'd like. And then tilt the foot to the right. Walk the hands to the right. You can lower it down onto the forearms or bring your right hand to the sacrum. Gently twist deeper. And release back through the center. Rebending your right knee. Tuck the left toes, lift the left knee up. Left hand plants in step, right foot, right arm sweeps up, open heart and crescent. Rotate onto the outer edges of both feet. Now let the left hip dip, right hand can come to the right knee, ease into the outer hip stretch. Lift it out of the left shoulder to intensify. And then start to lift it back up again. Slide the right foot on top of the left. You can lower knee, you can lower form if you'd like. Push the floor away, lift the hips up, side plank. Maybe float a tree, right foot can step back behind, press down through both feet, wide open. Now try to step the right foot all the way to the front of the mat without using the right hand. And pivot back onto the big toe mound of the left foot. Inhale as you rise up, high crescent pose. Both arms sweep up. Cactus the arms, broadly across the collarbones. Left arm underneath right arm, press the elbows together, press the hands together. Find some extension, maybe just a slight back bend. Start to shift right forward. Into the right foot, press up, lift up, warrior three. All right, so here is a little curve ball for you. Instead of just coming straight up to stand, try to kick the left leg out to the side. If you have space, 
and then bring that left leg up and over the right. Go for the double wrap if you can, or use that left leg as a kickstand. Gargadasana, eagle arms, eagle legs, and then lift deeper into the right knee. Maybe hook the elbows up and over your left knee. Lengthening the spine, if now pelvic full, breathe into your lower back. Engage in the back of your core, rise it back up again. And then again, sweep that left leg forward, out to the side, back into your warrior three. Now dive the eel arms to the mat. Release the eel arms to standing splits. And extend the left heel, breathe into the right hamstrings. Beautiful, lower the left knee behind the right foot. Set the left shin down and take a seat. Left heel to your outer right hip, right hand behind the sacrum. Left arm extends up, inhale. Exhale, left elbow outer to right knee, firm navel as you twist. Gaze is over the right shoulder. Bringing the spine out of toxins. And again, send the breath in, the breath the film reel, extracting the information that the body has to tell. Gently release and counter twist to your left. Massaging the intervertebral discs. Back through to center. Now pressing down through the right foot, sweep the left leg up and back, standing splits. Draw forehead towards shin, then extend the left heel up towards the ceiling. Breathe into the right hamstrings. Option two, plant down through the palms. Scoop the right foot back. Hands are shoulder distance apart, arms straight. Push the floor away. Connect the legs together at the top. Squeeze the legs together. Now you've already done a high crescent. Maybe you take a high crescent upside down in the formation of a stab handstand. Nike swoosh. Maybe pull the gaze through. Slowly lower, right foot can toe tap the right wrist on the way back down. Left foot steps way back. Seal the outer edge of the left foot down, lift the inner arch up. Inhale, both arms sweep up, warrior one. Hands come behind the back, interlace. Broaden across the collarbones as you inhale. Exhale to hinge from the hips. Lead with the heart. As the right shoulder passes the right knee, then begin to round. Lengthen the whole spine, up and out of the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your lower back. Grounding down to lift up, roll the spine up, both arms sweep up. Warrior one. Hands and hips as you straighten through your right leg, scoop up foot forward, shorten stance. Inhale as you find length, exhale, hinge from hips, lead with heart. Hands come to mat or to blocks. Feel free to use books, anything to elevate the hands so that you can experience this sensation that is plugging the right femur head bone into the right hip socket. See if you can hover the right foot off of the mat. Gently set the right foot back down. Walk the hands to the right. Lengthen the spine and then the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your lower back. Left hand plants out edge of right foot. Right hand to your sacrum, stabilize your pelvic bowl and roll the right shoulder back. Now maybe right arm extends up, twist. Firm the navel as you twist. Gaze is at the right fingertips. Now I want you to, once you get solidified and stabilized in your postures, to try closing the eyes, even if it's a quick shutter speed of the eyelids. Beautiful. Gently bend the right knee. Lean weight forward, press up, lift up. Left leg floats up. Parvrita, Ardha Chandrasana. Maybe bend left, knee reach back with the right hand for left foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. Beautiful work, yogis. Now I want you to get into the habit of working a handstand vinyasa. Both hands to mat, standing splits. So often people will just step back, 
and vinyasa, and if you're constantly stuck in vinyasa land, then you can actually cultivate too much strength, which creates an imbalance in heart chakra and prohibits kundalini energy from passing through number four. So slide that right foot back, left leg extends up. It might literally look like this. And that is okay. Just practice getting comfortable with getting upside down, using the mind, the faculties of our intellect to coordinate the muscle engagements with our bone structure. Take it up, handstanders. Handstanders, I want you to try lowering it down into a toe tap and then kick it back, chaturanga. And you can do legs wide to make it easier. You won't have to stick the butt back quite as much to counterbalance. Tap, shoot back, bend elbows, inhale, arvunga. Exhale, roll over the toes. Hips lift up and back. Adhamukha Shanasana. All right. And really, if you want to start getting into the upper most chakras, go start making your upper half the foundation. Warm it up. Left leg extends as you inhale. Open it out. Bend the knee. Take some hip circles. Ankle circles. Keep squaring out the shoulders. We extend the left leg up and back. Exhaling, knee to third eye, come forward into your plank pose. Inhale to extend. Exhale, knee to third eye. Inhale to extend. Last one, exhale, knee to third eye, and then hover. Step left foot through, right knee lowers. Untuck toes, sweep arms up, low crescent pose, both arms extend. Inhale. Exhale, hands come back down to the mat, straighten through the left leg, half splits. Come on to the heel of the left foot, reach the toes back towards your face. Inhale as you find length, and exhale, forward fold. Breathe into those hamstrings. You can tilt the foot from side to side. And then tilt the foot to the left. Walk the hands to the left. Forearms can lower. Literally, Guru is one who shines light. So only you can be your own Guru. And third eye really connects you to the Guru within. Maybe left hand to the sacrum. This is why I'm such a huge advocate for creative expression. As long as you're practicing the theme, so lovingly expanding consciousness. Gently release back to the center. Rebend the left knee. Tuck the right toes. Lift the right knee up. Right hand plants. Left arm sweeps up. Inhale. Rotate onto the outer edges of both feet. Now let the right hip dip. You can reach the left hand back behind or left hand to left knee. Lift up out of the right shoulder to intensify ascending breath. Breathe into the IT band. And again, modify as you need so that you can start to build strength in these formations, in these very powerful lines of energy. It can be on the knee, it can be on the forearm, and actually just start just starting to get comfortable with all these different orientations with respect due to gravity. Start to lift it back up again. A little bit of the bottom of the right, but you come onto the mat, right shoulder behind the right, right sweeping a little bit more of a trapezoid than a perfect triangle. Push the forward, lift the hips up. Maybe float a tree. Maybe left foot steps back behind. Press down to both feet, lift the hips up for your wild thing. Now try not to use the left hand. As you step that left foot all the way, foot front of the mat. Once you arrive, you can get yourself set up for high crescent. Again, come onto the base, come onto the right foot. So as our thighs together, activate the large muscle grips of the legs. Inhale as you rise, both arms sweep up. Little bend in the right knee is fine. Keep the hips neutral. Cactus the arms. Inhale. Exhale, right arm underneath left. Press the elbows together. Press the hands together. Find some extension, even just a slight back bend. Shift weight forward into the left foot. Press up, lift up, warrior through the eagle arms. Ready to rise up. 
Spiral it right back towards the ceiling. Push out through the heel. Reach out through crown. And here you have our little curve ball. Kick that right foot out to the side as you come stand. Right leg comes up and over. Left leg, don't for double wrap if you can. Bend a little bit deeper into the left knee. Maybe hook the elbows up and over the right knee. Lengthening the spine. Up and out of the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your lower back. The eagle flies high up above to witness everything that's happening below. Very similar to third eye, taking the position of the Atma, the highest self. And then slowly start to rise, upright the spine. Again, as you release that right foot, sweep it out to the side. And then back behind for your warrior three. Dive the eagle arms to the mat. Release the eagle arms, standing splits. Left hand behind left ankle, drop forehead towards shin and extend. The right heel towards the ceiling. Breathe into your left hamstrings. Maybe you can even press your third eye to your shin. Draw the right knee behind your left foot. Set the right shin down. Take a seat. Left hand behind the sacrum. Right arm extends up as you inhale. Exhale, right elbow out, right to the left knee, firm navel as you twist, gaze over the left shoulder. Inhale to elongate. And exhale to twist deeper. And then gently release. See the postures are really easy to close the eyes into too. It will tap you into the other senses. You'll be able to feel with the breath as it moves and air element touches all of those spaces. Back root to center, pressing down through the left foot, right leg sweeps up and back into our standing splits. So again, you could step the right foot back. I'm gonna challenge you to get upside down, even if it looks like this, little hop. And then step back because it's never going to start happening until you actually start trying, right? Attempt. Maybe take it up, handstanders. Combine your straight up and down. Draw the fingers together. Magnetize sternum to the front towards one another. Bending left heel towards left seat. Re extend the right leg back. Maybe a stag formation. Maybe start to pull the gaze through. Chin lock it, jaw and Darbanda. Slowly lower, left foot can toe tap the left wrist on the way down. Right foot steps way back, seal the outer to the right foot down, lift the inner arch up, inhale, rise up, warrior one, both arms sweep up. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands come behind the back. Opposite thumb on top, inhale, puff the chest. Exhale, hinge from hips, lead with heart. As left shoulder passes left knee, bend again to round. Lengthen the whole spine at the middle of the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your lower back. Grounding down to the depth of the spine up. Both arms sweep up. Warrior one. Hands to hips as you straighten through. Left leg. Scoop right foot forward, short of the stance. Inhale as you find leg, exhale, hinge from hips, leave the heart. Hands come to the mat. Use blocks or books if you have them. If you need them. Lifting up onto the fingertips. Straight through both arms, rounding the upper spine. Plug the left femur head bone into the left hip socket. Pull the left foot off of the mat just an inch. Set the left foot back down. Walk the hands to the left. Lengthen the spine. Up and out of the pelvic bowl. Breathe into your lower back. Right hand, average of left foot. Left hand to sacrum. Stabilize your pelvic bowl and roll your left shoulder back. Maybe left arm extends up and twist. Again, once you are completely stabilized in the posture, can you close your eyes 
in the shape. Again, fixing your gaze at the space between the eyebrows, pressing the tongue into the roof of the mouth, getting into these good habits, cultivating them now in practice. Again, feel free to open the eyes again as we transition into Parvrita, Ardha Chandrasana. Gently bend the left knee, knee weight forward, right hand underneath right shoulder, float the right leg up. Maybe bend right knee, reach back with the left hand for right foot, kick the foot into the hand, slingshot your heart forward towards the front of the room. Gently release both hands to the mat, standing splits, or extend the right heel, and again, maybe forehead towards shin. You can step that right foot back. I want you to try a little hop though. Hands plant, middle fingers in line, thumbs in line, hands shoulder distance apart, arms straight, lean shoulders beyond the wrists, push the floor away. Connect the legs together at the top. So we have our complete energetic highway connecting the bandhas, the energy locks. Maybe lowering it down for a toe tap. Again, butt back as the feet come forward. Toe tap the wrists, shoot it back, bend both elbows. Vinyasa, inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, roll over toes. Hips rise up and back, Adha Mukha. Shvanasana, downward facing dog pose. From downward facing dog pose, lift the heels, bend the knees, gaze forward in between the thumbs. Step, lightly hop, handstand, make your way. Maybe feet together this time. Toe tap on the way down. Inhale, peel chest forward, find length. Exhale, forward fold. Chair pose, bend your knees. Both arms sweep. Shift weight into the big toe mounds, lift your heels up, slowly lower it down. Tiptoe pose. Hands reach forward, knees open wide, and slowly. Gently take it down. Take a seat. Pull your feet. Knees can stay bent or straighten through the legs. Right? I like to jump. It's like the Lakers. Right? Yellow and purple. You got to, in order to get to purple, got to be yellow. So, got to do a little bit of Navasana Bokos. Activate that solar plexus. Also, yellow, the color of the smiling face. Smile going forward. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Inhales to lower, exhales to lift. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, lower, hold. Breath of fire, begin. Here for three, two, and one. Hug the knees and start to take some rocks, forward and back, and forward and back. Feet will come wide, reach your arms through. I'm lost in the squat pose at the front of the mat. All right, Yogi, so I'm gonna add on because I've been adding on and that's what I do. You can, if you want to, just step the left foot back. That is an option and do the low lunge and prepare for the standing postures to come. Those of you that would like to go a little bit further, I'm not quite uh, pressing my one-legged <laughs> Crow pose up in the handstand and lowering it. So let's do a little cheater version. And if you want to, you can go with me, or maybe you can. If you can, then feel free. Knees come high up in the the armpits. Lift one or both feet. Now feet to the forearms, pressed up, lift up. Press it up in the handstand. Then lowering it back down again. Shift weight into the right shin, extend left leg back. Ekapada Bhakasana. Again, right foot can be grounded. Step left foot way back. Right foot between the palms. 
Left foot swings down to 45. And bring the right hand to the instep of the right foot. Left arm extends straight up. Inhale. Side ankle pose. Now extending the left arm forward towards the front of the room. Spell the pinky edge down from the towards the sky. Left hand can reach back behind for the half bind. Now, just for fun, bend and straighten through the right leg and enjoy that arm balance will have created a certain amount of heat, tapas, and whether you took the arm balance or not, we all did some boat pose, so enjoy that gentle opening and then maybe reach back for the full bind. Full binders. Take flight, left foot steps forward, press up, lift up, reach your rise, bird of paradise. Gazing at a single point of focus or dress seat. Straighten through standing, then straighten through left hand, side and breath, side and guide. Slowly lower it back down again, birds. Pressing down through the right foot, shake weight forward into crown. Left leg extends back down, top and then pose on your way back. And then stepping it way back. Release the bind. Rise, warrior two, straighten through right leg as you rise. Heel to left foot forward, short and stance. Deepen in the right hip crease. Extend the right arm forward, reach. Right hand falls to ankle, shin floor. Left arm extends up and twist. Firm the navel as you twist. Gaze is at the left fingertips. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Now left hand can reach back for the half bind. Right arm extends forward towards front of the room. Find your core engagement. Keep that breath long, deep and audible. And then gently bend the right knee, moving forward. Press up, lift up. Float the left leg up. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. Or you can extend the left arm if you'd like. Maybe bend the left knee, reach back with the left hand for your left foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Slingshot with the heart forward towards the front of the room. Amazing. Gently release. We extend the left leg back. Now kick the left foot to the side. And forward as you bend in the right knee. Arrive in your pistol squat. Fun stuff. Take it down, take a seat, float your feet. Back to our solar plexus activation, right? Color yellow. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, lower, hold. Breath of fire, then begin. Here for three. Two. And one, hug these and start to take some rocks. Forward and back. Massage the whole length of the spine. Feet will come wide, reach your arms through, back into the last one squat. Again, feel free to take whatever variations work best for you. Modify, do what feels comfortable. Finding our sukha is crucial because we need the air element to get in there to extract information for us to then witness with third eye. And if you're not comfortable, then the cardiovascular system constricts, barring the way, the passage for breath, oxygenated blood flow. So find whatever serves your body best. But invite a little bit of a challenge, right? It's kind of, that's where the fun is. So knees come high up in and move it forward. Float one or both feet. Maybe you're taking it up, toes to forearms, press up, lift up. I love this variation because it is so stacked. So you're building strength in alignment, riding it up like an elevator. And there's a circle as well in the yantra for breath chakra. Symbolic for the void or that shushumna channel. Shift weight into the left shin. Right leg extends back. Empty pot of block. Step it way back. Right foot swings down. Left foot in between the palms. And then bring the left hand to the instep of the left foot. Right arm sweeps straight up. Inhale. This is just a 
subtle nuance, but palm faces forward first, then extend the right arm. Pinky edge is rotating down towards the ground, going up towards the sky. Notice how you can pull out of the humerus head bone into the shoulder socket and relax the scapula down the back. External rotation of humerus head bone in shoulder socket. Then right hand can reach back for that left thigh half bind. This is to keep the chest open, broaden across the collarbones, bend and straighten through the left leg. Amazing. Now left arm can thread underneath for the full bind. Full binders, take flight. Right foot steps forward. Press up, lift up, root to rise up. Bird of paradise. Gazing at a single point of focus or GST. Straight through standing, and then straight through lifted. Amazing, send the breath in there. If you want to, you can do a quick shutter speed with the eyes. But definitely press the tongue into the roof of the mouth. Get into that good habit. Slowly lower it down, yogis. Pressing down through the left foot. Shift weight into crown. Right knee extends back down. Half moon pose on your way back. And stepping it way back. Release the bind. Rise warrior two. Straight through the left leg as you rise. Tilt the right foot forward. Shorten stance. Deepen the left to increase. Extend left or forward. Reach. Left hand to ankle, shin floor, right arm extends up. Twist the spine open, open hearted twist. Wrap that left seat underneath you. Roll the right shoulder back. This is a pretty solid posture for most yogis. See if you can close your eyes here. You might surprise yourself. You might actually start to see some pretty exquisite sacred geometry. Maybe some really beautiful colors that you don't see in 3D. Right hand can reach back for that half bind. Left arm extends forward towards the front of the room. Little tiny little micro bend in the left knee spine. Now gently bend left knee and lean weight forward. Press up, lift up, half moon pose. Keep the half bind as long as you need to maintain the external rotation of the hips. Right hip stacking on top of left. And then right arm can extend up, half moon, maybe bend right knee for your chalpasana, kick the foot into the hand and slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. Gently release, and again, kick the right foot out to the side. Kick it forward as you bend the left knee, arrive in your pistol squat. All right, gently release it down and take a seat. Feet come down to the mat now. Hands come back behind your hips. This is just kind of fun, so have some fun with it. Now, I don't recommend taking it into full upward facing bow if you don't have a full bow in your practice, but you can still start to move into these shapes. Let's start with the left fingertips pointing in towards the midline. Press up, lift up into reverse tabletop. Now sweep the right arm up and overhead. And then slowly lower back down again. It's a fun movement, right? Now switching sides. Right hand, fingers can point in towards midline. You can start with the left hand grounded. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. Now sweep that left arm up and overhead. Maybe the full urva. Release, left hand sweeps out to the side, and then gently release it back down. Whew, all right, soles the feet together, knees out wide, hands to your feet. Press the elbows into the inner thighs as you inhale, find length, puff chest, exhale, forward fold, body fold. And then rolling the spine back up through to seated. Draw your knees in, soles the feet come out wide. Backs of the hands come to your side bodies, elbows, inner thighs. Gently draw the elbows together now. It's kind of nice to learn different entries into postures too. You might find that you're able to kind of scrape away some more some scars and, and weed out some more stagnant energy in your field. Eventually the elbows will touch. They don't have to touch today. Gently release 
up. And you can shake it out. Hands come back behind the hips. Press up, lift it up. Elbows and thighs. Press the elbows into the inner thighs. Now straighten through the legs, piece some fingers and thumbs, kind of big toes. And as you find length, exhale forward fold, padding your stasana. All right, right hand comes to your right hip, shift weight into the right foot, and then come to stand with the left foot in hand. Open the left leg out to the left, maybe grow a tree branch. This is optional. We've been working a lot of this stuff, this practice. Hinge the hips, slowly lower that left foot down to meet the right foot. And then rise it back up again. Back through to center, reach across, right hand catches outer, knee or outer to foot. Reach your left hand back and twist. From the navel as you twist, gaze is over the left shoulder, left fingertips. Back through the center, interlace fingers, down left sole of the foot, slowly lower down, push the squatters. Fun stuff. All right, when you're ready, press it up, lift it up, reach your eyes back up. Into to Asana Pankustasana. Release the foot, hands to hips to grow branches here for five, four, three, two, one. Sweep left leg back, warrior three. Hands to mat, standing splits, reach down tail, breathe into your right hand space. Now you could just set that left foot back again. We're going to go directly into some hip opening stretches. Or handstanders take it up. I'm going to add on, since we already did a hollow back, press the floor away, connect the legs together at the top. This time, Right foot can come on top of the left thigh for an assisted scorpion sting. Figure four. Melt the heart towards the floor. Core stays engaged. And eventually, the foot will touch the Shiva bun. And gently release. Right foot can come. So the average of that right hand, work the slow control descent down. Left foot steps way back. Left knee lowers, forearms lower, eases the hip stretch. So, really crucial, always find the straight up and down handstand first, which is what I did, the straight up and down handstand first thing. And then, I like to add follow back. And then, scorpion. There's the process. Right hand to right, the gaze on the right shoulder. Come onto the flesh in front of the left knee, bend left knee. Reach back with the right hand for your left foot, press heel towards seat. Gently release. Walk right foot back, bring midline, straighten the right leg, half splits, full splits. Feel free to add on some variations, of course, as they call in. And keep scissoring the thighs together here, activating the bandha, firming the pelvic core muscles, maybe float those arms up. And really bending the right knee. Walk the right foot behind your left wrist. Release the right knee behind the right wrist. Half pigeon pose. Gaze back at the left leg in line with the hip. Inhale as you find length. Maybe float up the arms again. And exhale into forward fold. Enjoy. Send in breath. Send in your jai. You can rest your brow on the, on the mat again here. Just kind of, as you receive information, directly downloading it into the earth. Mama Gaia graciously receiving all that we release. And then start to walk the hands back in. Pressing down to the palms, shift weight into your right seat. Slide the left leg forward. 
Left leg comes up and over the right, right away. Knees stacking, heels towards outer hips. If this is too intense, simple cross-legged position with the left shin in front is fine. Go and cross the legs. Now left arm can extend up, bend at the elbow, reach the right hand up the back for the fingertips. And here, you can actually press the back of the head into the arm, which is also a part of the chakra. So often we think of the front body when we think of the chakras, but there actually are evacuation points front and back. Inhale as you find them, exhale your portable. Deep Ujjayi breaths, again, maybe the forehead comes to the mat. And again, give yourself permission to command that the limiting thought forms as they emerge be destroyed. And then rolling the spine back up through the seat. Release the arms. You can shake them out a little bit. Stack the shins, double pigeon. Feet, uh, hands to feet. Press the hands into the feet to prevent the ankles from sickening and then forward fold it. Again, can you rest the brow on that? If not, no worries. It is a nice connection. And visualize this violet flame inside and any limiting thought forms that emerge, give yourself to get permission to cast that stagnant information, these limiting thought forms into the flame to be resurrected. Energy is neither created nor destroyed, it just changes form. Give that limiting thought form its opportunity to ascend into a higher vibrational frequency as you rearrange the Thomas Winners in real time. And rolling the spine back up through the seated. Walk the hands back behind, straighten the legs out in front, bounce the knees, much way for the feet. All right, and draw the legs and soles of feet come together, knees come wide, scoot hips towards heels. Another buttock come on hands underneath feet, press elbows into inner thighs as you forward forward. And rolling the spine back up through the seated. Draw the knees and feet come wide, hands behind hips, press up, lift up, relax in the squat. Straight through the legs. Peace on fingers and thumbs, catch big toes, inhale as you find length through the spine. And exhale the forward fold. Notice the difference between sides. Again, there is power in the contrast. Let it go of what is no longer serving. And then left hand to left hip. Shift weight into your left foot. Root down, come to stand with the right foot in hand. I'm going to let the nerd out for a second here. I really feel like Third Eye is like the Eye of Sauron, or, or J.R.R. Tolkien was inspired by subtle body to come up with this, this fictional uh, dynamic with the, the hobbits and Lord of the Rings. Open the right leg out to the right, maybe grow a tree branch. It's kind of like, again, you're witnessing with the Eye of Sauron all of this stack of information, casting it into the fires of Mordor. <laughs> all right, um, my, my nerdiness little moment is over, shift weight forward and hinge at the hips, slowly lower and right foot down to meet the left. And rise it back up again. Back through to center. Reach across, let your catch the outer knee or outer your foot. Reach your right hand back and twist. Firm navel as you twist. Gaze is over the right shoulder, right fingertips. through the center. Interlace fingers around the right sole of the foot and slowly lower. I wonder though if the fear that surmounts in that novel is really the fear of the karmas, their unwillingness to be witnessed, processed, and released. It's okay. I mean, Gollum jumps in willingly at the end, right? Press up, lift up, root to rise. Whew! I like to think, again, they're all getting a makeover. Releasing the butt hands to hips of our branches. They're ascending into a higher vibrational frequency, so they're not completely being destroyed. Here for five, four, three, two, one. Sweep the right leg back. Warrior three. Pitch the heart forward. 
We dive the hands to the mat, standing splits. Again, you can just set the right foot back, or maybe you take the plunge, dive into the abyss, find the straight up and down first, activate your core, and then right foot comes onto left thigh. I'm sorry, I think it's left foot <laughs> comes onto right thigh. Bending in the right knee, assisted scorpion sting. And then gently make your way back. Left foot can slowly work that controlled descent. Step. To the outer edge of the left hand. Right foot steps way back, right knee lowers, forearms lower. Ease in, forearms can lower down to the ground. Nod the hips from side to side. Honestly, I was really surprised at how quickly my third eye activated. I became obsessed with the scorpion shape. Left hand to left knee, gaze over the left shoulder. And scorpion will unclog the heart chakra and send that energy just barely through. Bend the right ear, back with the left hand to the right foot, press heel towards seat. Which is why I love to just litter my practice with scorpions to maintain that connection. So I'm witnessing the third eye activation throughout the whole sequence. Gently release, back through to center, walk left foot back through midline. Slide left foot forward, walk right foot back. Slight scissoring the thighs together. Activate Mula Bandha, firming the pelvic floor muscles. Maybe float the arms up. And then when you're ready, re bending your left knee. Walk the left foot behind your right wrist. Release the left knee behind the left wrist, half pigeon pose. Gaze back at the right leg in line with the hip, inhale as you finally, and exhaling to forward fold it. Main thing is again, you want to balance the masculine and feminine, so be sure to get the straight up and down first, and that goes for lumbar spine too, solar plexus. And if you just become obsessed with the feminine aspect, which is the scorpion shape instead of the straight up and down, you can jeopardize the integrity of the intervertebral discs. So really, really crucial. Find your straight up and down, hit that line first, and then introduce the bend. And of course, the third eye will be activating really, really quickly. <laughs> I um, absolutely love it because they say that eventually, and we'll be getting into the eight limbs of yoga too in uh, various classes, but eventually you're practicing all eight limbs all at once. So they're considered to be spokes on a wheel. And you want to, of course, work each one individually, just like you're individually putting each spoke into the wheel. But eventually it becomes a, a locomotive device, right? It becomes our, our mechanism for uh, excavation of self, and it catalyzes this, this uh, ascension process, this alchemical process of purifying the lead of the egoic self into the goal of the eternal soul. And so I became obsessed with figuring out how to meditate while practicing. And it's still something I'm perfecting all the time. Start to walk the hands back in. Shift weight onto the left seat. Slide the right leg forward. Right leg comes up and over the left. Again, simple cross-legged position is fine with the right shin in front. Heels towards outer hips. Feel free to walk those feet out wide to intensify. Right arm extends up as you inhale. Exhale, the right elbow bends. Right hand reaches in between the shoulder blades. Left hand reaches up and back for the fingertips. Compress the back of the head into the right arm. Inhale as you finally exhale forward fold it. Rolling the spine back up through the seated. And stack the shins. Hands to feet. 
press the feet into the hands, inhale as you find length, and exhale forward fold it. Breathing, rolling the spine back up through the seated, and walk the hands back behind, straighten through the legs, bounce the knees, reach way through the feet, slide the flesh to the bum, out from underneath, inhale as you sweep the hands down and up, and exhale forward fold, Paschimottanasana. And again, rolling the spine back up through the seated. Draw your knees in, feet come wide, hands behind hips, press up, lift it back into Malasana squat. This time, make your way back through Vinyasa. However you like, you can take Bakasana and shoot it back. I'm gonna throw in a little headstand, because why not have a little bit of fun with the headstand. Knees come high up and in towards the armpits. You wait forward, lift one or both feet up. Maybe slowly lower it down, crown to crown. Rest up, there's a tripod headstand. Knees can come high up and in towards the armpits. Press up and jump back into your Vakasana. And feel that straight line of energy point straight through crown. It goes right through brow chakra, so there's got to be some activation there. Press up, lift it up. Of course, also avoid fluoride in your toothpaste. Gaze forward, shoot your head forward as you shoot the feet back, and then lift elbows, forelimbs down. Vinyasa, inhale to your Urdhva Mukha. And exhale, roll over the toes. Hips lift up and back, Adha Mukha. Again, knees to mat. Hips to heels, child's pose for a couple breaths. And then rolling the spine up through the seated. Again, tuck your toes, stick to the on top of your heels. You can also stay cross-legged if that's more comfortable, comfortable to the position of your choosing. And Yana Mudra, this is Yana Mudra. I know it's popular now for other things now, but it is Yana Mudra for all intents and purposes in our practice. Uh, which is the union between the eternal soul and the individual self, which is the thumb is the eternal soul and then the, the pointer finger is the individual self. So squeezing the thighs together, upright the spine. And again, we're gonna do that third eye activation breath work. So it sounds like this. With the head tilting back. Pause for a few moments and notice the effects. All right, coming forward. Untuck the toes, gentle drum roll, kick those feet out. Wish away for the heels. Things just point towards the knees again and your weight back. Now, again, be cautious with that breath work. If you do it for more than five minutes, you might actually give yourself what resembles a headache because so much energy gets congested. You want to think of it as like electronic, uh, magnetic plumbing. So all these pipes, they have crusty business, stagnant energy, and the energy comes pushing. And so you want to take it in small increments at first so that the energy as it pushes out that stagnant information, it doesn't get congested and over cause overwhelm. So similar to throat chakra, the bottleneck effect that I was talking about. Again, you want to be, you want to take your time with the sattvic gunas, throat chakra, brow chakra. Okay, I really wanted to introduce to you one of my favorite postures still to this day is the full-on scorpion. And this is where I started to get throat eye activation while practicing with my eyes still open. So um, actually warrior two is when I first started to get it because it was such a stable posture. I started to get through an activation with my eyes closed. But this was, this was the most surreal thing, and I remember exactly where I was, the exact moment. It reminds me a lot of certainty. I read every 
every surfer knows exactly uh, where they were and how old they were when they caught their first real wave where they were able to do some turns. So this is kind of similar, um, I think, in terms of yoga. So wrap the elbows in, pressing down through the forearms, spread the fingers wide, tuck the toes, hips rise up and back. Now you can just stay here if you want and work your dolphin pose. Maybe one leg extends up and feel free. Please use the wall if you have a wall and you feel uncomfortable in the middle of the room. Relocate to some wall space. Find yourself a wall to work with. One leg extends up and you might stay here. Maybe push the floor away. A little tiny hop takes you up. Squeeze the legs together at the top. Reach after the ball's feet. Now charge up the scorpion sting. Pull the gaze forward. Bend the knees. Pull the chest forward again, melt the heart space. Delicious. You might even see those feet hanging over the edge. Those little fangs of the kundalini, the divine serpent. Rise it back up again. And gently release. Take a quick child's pose. Lift to heels, roll spine forward your thighs, rest brow on your Amazing work. Roll the spine up into your tabletop right away, where the forearms are that, for your sphinx, hips to mat. Pressing down through the forearms, brow across the collarbones. Now walk the arms forward, slide right arm underneath the left, and walk the left arm forward. You can walk the left arm forward and cross it over to your right foot, palms face down. Maybe slide right knee and then the right hip for your half frog. So most people generally get their feet to their head in a forearm balance first before handstand because you have more energy feeding up into the structure. It's a stronger standing still wave of energy, but eventually you'll be able to take it up in the handstand as well. It's nice to kind of work in the different planes of your existence so that you can formulate the shape and then you can take the shape into different planes to reactivate even more of your subtle body, even more naughties. Slide the right leg back and you brought it into your half frog. Slide the left arm out from underneath or left arm back through the center. Slide the right arm out from underneath and we'll just stick with the same stretch, other side, left arm underneath right, walk the right arm forward and across over to your left. Both palms facing up, maybe slide the left leg in line with the left hip for your half frog pose. Breathe into the back of the heart space. Deep giant breaths. Beautiful work. Sliding that left leg back, you brought it into half frog. Right arm back through center, slide left arm out from underneath. Arms out to a T, gaze upward the right hand and like the right shoulder, left hand underneath, left shoulder, bend left knee, roll onto your right side, reach your left hand back for your right fingertips. So they say that a kundalini yogi <laughs> practitioner or a, a yogi striving to activate their kundalini should be willing to experience the equivalent of two steaming hot rods being thrust down either side's spine. And to me, that reminds me of basically the core work that is necessary. Again, the yellow to get to the purple to eventually be able to conduct energy through all six chakras. And out through crown. You got crown coming at you tomorrow. Switch sides, left arm extends out, right hand underneath right shoulder. But what I love about it is the kundalini energy starts failing through and it doesn't feel like work. It really doesn't. Right now, it's just back for your left fingertips. Maybe initially it does, but once you start to get that root to crown connection and it continues to amplify as you expand into new space, it just feels so delightful. A couple more deep ujjayi breaths here. Beautiful work, back through the center. All right, once more, hands come behind the back, interlace your fingers, press palms together, reach the hands back behind. From here, bending in the knees, reach back with the hands to the feet, 
press the feet into the hands. If you have an overhead grip, feel free to take it here, yogis. You can rock forward and back. Maybe even rock forward into a chin stand. Just like with scuba diving, you don't want to ascend too fast because that can cause problems to occur, problems to arise. Cross the shins, roll up the legs. Just like also like a credit card, you don't want to bend it forward and back and forward and back. It might actually snap, which we don't want. We don't want that to happen for us. Fine. So from here, slowly lower it down. Walk the feet in. Feet right behind the sit bones. Press up, lift up. Roll the spine up. Hands can come alongside the ears. Fingers point towards shoulders. Squeeze the imaginary block with those thighs. Lift the bones to the crown head first and pause. Walk the hands in. Press up, lift up the rest of the full earth and down Now lean. Take some rocks. Press down for the feet. Lead with the hips. It's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. And the rest of the body follows. Yeah, chubs. <laughs> All right. And then back down again. And again, hips lead. Hips rotate forward, or shift forward, I should say. Both hands ready to receive the floor. And release. And while we did 
scorpion earlier might as well if you'd like to walk those hands in take it up and over chakrasana this time from chakrasana the heart leads the way right and then the rest of the body follows now make your way back hands to scorpion back through to urdhva dhanurasana Tuck the chin, back of the head to mat first, and slowly release the spine down. Windshield wiper the knees, releasing the lower back. And now we begin to resurface. When you've had your fill of the back bends, and again, always feel free if you want to take multiple rounds or if you're on your asana, same thing if you want to relocate to the wall. Feel free to hit the pause button and go for it. Hug the right knee and extend the left leg up. Scoot the hips to the right, go right over to your left. Supine twist. Right hip steps on top of the left. Pull the right shoulder down to the ground. Breathe into the right side body. Close the eyes. You can start to visualize the color purple, indigo, violet. Maybe feeling the effects of your breath work, the energy circling in and around the third eye. Back through the center, hug the right knee in, half happy baby, maybe threading the right arm through at the pot of Shurshasana. And then gently release, hug the right knee in. Extend right leg out, hug the left knee in. Scoot the hips to the left, draw the left knee over to the right. And really don't be so focused, fixated on getting the feet to the head and the scorpion. Delight in that slow, delicious earth wave. I like to call it the earth wave. Because again, I had to transmute my love for surfing into yoga. So you want to visualize yourself. Your whole body is like a wave, and you're literally shaped like a wave breaking. And eventually, the crest of the wave does hit the trough, right? It does meet that crescendo, wherein it makes that beautiful tube ride, tube section. But be patient, right? Enjoy each and every little tiny micro adjustment, micro rearrangement of the Thomas Gunas. Back through the center, half happy baby, and really send that breath in there. Witness as the breath goes in and extracts that information. Because again, if the limiting thought forms just go back into their old arrangements, then you're right back where you started from. Next practice, right? You want to continue to just chisel away a little bit by bit into that space while also maintaining the balance between the masculine and the feminine, so crucial, so, so crucial. Gently release, extending the legs straight up. Wrap elbows in, press up, lift up, shoulder stand. Press chest towards chin, breathe into the back of the neck. Maybe lowering the feet down, Palasana plow. And here the back of the head again is pressing into the mat, so also a brush off the pose. Press the palms together. Maybe bend the knees around the ears, ear squeeze. Slowly release the interlace and articulate the spine down. One vertebra at a time. Hands come underneath the seat. Press down through the forearms, lift the chest up. Matsyatsana, fish pose. Release, happy baby pose, maybe both legs behind the head. And this is so crucial too. If you just do scorpions and you neglect going the other way, the back of the spine, the dorsal side is going to get aggravated over time. So sometimes I think people will go towards the big back bend, which is more extroverted, 
and they might have a uh, aversion to introversion. You gotta go both ways. If you wanna keep going in the back bending department, you gotta go deeper in the forward folding department. It's just the way that it goes. <laughs> this one's kind of funny too. Yes, this is real. I have, have no CGI experience, so <laughs> gently release. And extending the legs out, feet flop open, palm space up, close the eyes. Everyone take a nice deep inhalation through the nose. And exhale, let it go. <sighs> Gazing at the space between the eyebrows, you can release the tongue from the roof of the mouth. And just bringing your full undivided attention to brow chakra ajna. And again, giving yourself permission to let go of any limiting thought forms that came up throughout the practice. And you are not completely destroying them, right? We are Vishnu associated with brow chakra. We are preserving what serves us. We are overseeing this reconstruction of the temple. So even though it appears as though we're destroying, we are immediately, instantaneously recreating resurrection. Thank you on behalf of the collective consciousness. We are all one. All of the work that you have done here is felt by all beings everywhere. The highest light within me truly sees and honors the highest light within each of you. I thank you for your practice and your presence. Namaste.